In this episode, I want to talk about Christmas. Now, I know as we record this, it's Sunday the 14th of January, which for people in this part of Bosnia-Herzegovina, where I live, is Serbian New Year's Day. Last night, just before midnight, there were fireworks going off everywhere. And every year, I write a blog post and try and make a video about the way I spend my second Christmas, which is Serbsky Bozic, which means Serbian Christmas. And this year, I thought, we're going to do something a bit different. Rather than talk about me, we're going to, don't take this the wrong way, but this is putting the shoe on the other foot. I'm talking to Vesna Djukic. Now, Vesna and I have known each other sort of online for many years. Vesna comes from near Shipovo, which is quite away from where I am here. She's been living in the UK for some time. But my standard question for this is, and this is the best way to do it, who is Vesna Djukic? I originally come from Pljava, uh, which is near Shipova, which is very close to, it is where uh, the river Pliva comes from. And so I met my husband in 1999. I worked as a translator. He was in the British Army. He's not in the army anymore. He works as a scientist now and a teacher. And so I moved to the UK in 2001. And we've since had two sons. They're called Dragan and Jovan. Dragan is 19 this coming Wednesday and Jovan is 10. And I come from a lovely, very loving family. We're very close. And then here in the UK, I'm, I have a part of my husband. He's very, I would say he's very British and he's very quite reserved and quite on the quiet side, uh, completely opposite to me. And I am somebody who loves being around people. And so I have friends from all over the world. And so I, I work as a, a childminder now, and as well as a painter and decorator for female clients only. And my childminding group of children come from many countries, and I'm very proud of that. And my people's heritage, and including my heritage, is very important to me. So I embrace the children I look after, I embrace their heritages. So I have children from... Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Russia, Ireland, Australia, Spain, and then quite a few British children as well. And so my children have Serbian names and as well as Welsh names because my husband's or or originally from Wales. So they are Dragon Morgan and Jovan Tudor. So yeah, so we are a mixed heritage family. But from the very beginning of mine and my husband's relationship, we really, were, we both felt very strongly about embracing both of our cultures, especially once we had children. So that's something that we've always done. So we've always celebrated both Christmases as authentically as possible in the UK. When I came here, I found I really got at an early stage that there were for me, large cultural differences between me being British and the people of the Western Balkans, and in particular, the people in the northern part of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Kri- the Kraina. And I've, I found some of that very difficult in the early days to get my head round. When I first moved to the UK, we moved to North Yorkshire, and we were living in a small village near Catrick near the the kind of one of the biggest garrisons at the time and and I remember I kept making kind of cakes and inviting neighbors for cups of tea and stuff like that so then I realized I wasn't being invited back so much and and then I realized at first I thought that was just me but then I realized it's not really a done thing because they're a small village in north of Yorkshire and they didn't really mix so much at the time so that was quite quite a cultural difference and I I also felt terribly homesick because at the time we didn't really have we didn't have FaceTime or we didn't have free phone calls or free messages so that was yeah that was quite hard to begin with but then I met my best friend very quickly Nikki who is British and and we've been friends ever since we've been best friends ever since she's embraced me into her family and and then over the years I met many friends of friends 
have made a really big difference and I felt included in everything. And then once I had children, that made it much, much easier because then that kind of, that was a more of an organic way of making friends with other mums and dads at school and so on. It was just different. It was just very, I, I think as anybody so young and we were newly not newly in a relationship we had been in a relationship for two years prior to that but you were in love and you you have rose tinted glasses on and you think it's all going to be but actually the reality is the two countries are very different culturally and yeah it was very hard to begin with yeah you said that you take your culture your identity very seriously how difficult is it to keep your Serbian perspective if you like. As far as I'm aware, there isn't such a huge Serbian community in the United Kingdom per se. And if there is, I don't think that they're all concentrated in, in certain areas. So h- how do you maintain your Serbianism, if I can use that, that your Serbskiness? So my husband or my partner is very supportive. And so we're both very supportive of each other's cultures. And he has always embraced everything that my family does back in Pleva or back in Shippewa. So he's always been very supportive of that. And he's, he's just a very inclusive person. He's aware that we are all the same and we just all come from various different cultures. And so that has really helped. However, it has been much, much easier since we have this new kind of online world. So beforehand, the only way I could keep in touch with various Serbian communities in the UK has been if I went to London, because there was, I would say that one of the biggest communities is in London, then in Corby or Oxford and so on. I would say having this new access to this online world and the on- online community has made things so much easier. I just feel, I don't feel any kind of anything that holds me back really and I think also setting those kind of foundations very early in our relationship I suppose I'm lucky that my husband embraces my culture as much as I do his. How do the boys react to it the boys they go to school they they, 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 they have their own their friends and everything and when they come home there's there's mum and uh, maybe mum's made something that English kids or British kids wouldn't normally uh, uh, be exposed to and how do they react to it? I know they don't know anything different because that's the way they've grown up. But when they come come home and they bring friends, what's what's it like? To begin with, I tried because I we don't really have ready meals. So I tend to have a pack of frozen bread and fish. That's the only thing that we kind of use process. So I always cook everything. As in Serbian cooking, there is a lot of there are onions and garlic and every, everything. So to begin with, I kept making these kind of Unrefined foods, but with the Serbian twist, with lots of veg and lots of garlic and onions. And I re- realized very quickly that I couldn't quite serve that to, to a lot of our kind of son's friends. So nowadays, if we have play days, I tend to stick to a pizza or fish fingers and chips and things like that. But the boys, they absolutely eat everything. And we made a very conscious de- decision about introducing them very early on to various cultural foods from as soon as their bodies were ready for as so we would introduce them to everything garlic chili ginger so there's nothing they don't eat so they're used to it and they love it but but I can't quite serve the same foods for their friends and but of course their children are different so there are some who would absolutely embrace it and love it and there are others who are just not used to those days so their palate is just not used to it we're going to go to Christmas now, which was last weekend. And for me, uh, it's easy these days because on my Christmas, I do get in the kitchen and I do my bit. When it's for Serbsky Bozic, for Serbian Christmas, we go to Tamara's parents and her mother takes the strain. Having said that, we'll do things like we'll make Chesnitsa and we'll also uh, contribute by making Sarnama. First of all, how authentic can your menu be? That's a two-part question here. How authentic can your menu be? And being a Brit, I know that I never came across this until I arrived here. Um, How do you actually get all the ingredients for your cinema? 
in um in the first few years i simply it was very difficult to find the ingredients especially when we lived in yorkshire and so on but then we moved to germany and i was able to we lived in germany for a while and i was able to there are many more ethnic shops if i can call them different shops from different cultures and so i was able to find sauerkraut as in kisser and vegeta and and that was like that was so amazing it made me really happy and then we moved to cardiff and and cardiff cardiff is very multicultural and so then i was able to find even more ingredients there and so as the time has gone on actually there are a lot more kind of polish shops here um now there are romanian shops and and they tend to stock very similar ingredients but until that happened i had to go to shepherd's bush in london and that was the only place where i could source my ingredients from and obviously now there are online shops as well so i can get that from online as well but i really like going to shepherd's bush and there is a serbian church in notting hill which is really beautiful and i love going there as well so yes yeah, so i would combine the two to go to shepherd's bush and then notting hill to the church which has a restaurant next door and and they serve everything Serbian. The Bozic menu is well for us is a seven course delight. What do you serve as your standard Bozic uh, lunch? We started traditions with badni dan and badni vechi. So on one of my friends Kate Kate Morgan she gets she got me my badniak last time and so it's always a friend because we don't really have anywhere in Salisbury where I can actually go and cut one down and Kate got me my latest badniak and so we decorate the badniak and then I do piukanya with my kids every year and then on Christmas Eve I serve a, a pescatarian dinner so with with kind of a few vegans as in because it's still the Christmas Lent on Christmas Eve and then on so yeah it's so a pescatarian dinner with a few other side dishes that are I would say I don't know the closest I can explain them to is um, vegan and so then on Christmas day we have so I make tzitzvara I make kuruza or kukuruza uh, but in Pliavo or in Shippo we say kuruza which is the cornbread then I make my favorite pie, which is zelyanica, which is panna or spinach pie. And then I make ruska salata or Russian salad, pickle as in fermented vegetables like chickens and sauerkraut and cauliflower kind of salads. And then sarma and I'm just trying to think, I'm looking at my list here. And then I make sarma and, and then usually roast pork. So we have a really wonderful butcher here in Salisbury. And they're called the Pritchetts Butchers. And they, for ever since we've been living in Salisbury, they've provided my Christmas meat for a British Christmas and Serbian Christmas as well. And so they do this kind of rolled pork or porchetta and, and it's beautiful. So yeah, so I try to be as authentic as possible. And then my husband, every year, he makes my chasenita. And he takes huge pride in that. And he's tried a few recipes from a few online YouTube videos. And then he's found the one that works the best. So he makes it. My mum always says that he makes it much better than she does. So, yeah, which makes me really happy. And then we do the coin as well. And I would say this. And my oldest son, Dragon, he tends to find the coin almost every year. And then this year was the first year that Jovan didn't cry when Dragon found the coin. Because they're very competitive. They both get very competitive about who's going to find coin. Do you on Christmas switch off the TV and just have it as a purely fa family day? So what I tend to do, we I try to we try to eat at the dining room table as much as possible. So we were we would be in the dining room and I would have the badniak and then I the obviously the chestnuts and the and the Serbian type candles that I get from the Serbian church. And then I just play some um, Serbian music in the background. So I found this, um, uh, it was, hang on a second, sir, I'm just going to check. It was basically Serbian church music and various liturgies that that could find on Apple Music or YouTube. So that's what we tend to do. And then we just tend to enjoy the food and get into a proper food co coma. 
afterwards. <laughs> I like the way you describe that because it certainly is. How difficult or maybe not difficult is it? I don't know whether you drink it or not. I'm a great lover of rakia, especially the rakia that Tamara's father makes. And I think I'm one of the few foreigners in that lives in this country that actually holds it above my beloved whiskey. But how difficult is it to get hold of any decent rakia? To be honest with you, I've never bought it in the UK. I, I tend to bring my dad's rakia with me every year. And, and actually, I have a funny story. So my husband is, is very by the book. And he does everything by the book and everything has to be done by law and so on. So once when Dragon was six, we drove to Bosnia, drove to ship all the way from Salisbury and back. And and as we set off from Bosnia, we he likes to pack the car and everything's immaculate. And, and so he said, is there anything that we need to declare on the border? And I said, no, everything's everything's done. So we drove all the way from Bosnia. We got to Dover. Obviously, we went through many countries. And we go to Dover in England, and, and once we passed the security checks and so on, I said to him, actually, <laughs> I had four bottles of rakia in the car. And I didn't tell him because he would have worried and, and he wouldn't, probably wouldn't have done it. So that's, and nowadays in flights and so on, I just tend to bring a bottle of rakia with me here. And he is a huge fan. He, especially my dad's, yeah, especially my dad's rakia, because dad is very... It's very pure the way they make it, and we've got our own orchard, and they use our plums, and uh, so yeah. So he's a huge fan. Uh, you most probably haven't got a garden big enough in Salisbury unless you're mega rich to have it your own orchard. But but how do you when you introduce it to maybe friends or acquaintances? I don't know if you have. What do they have the same typical British reaction to? Oh, it's petrol. <laughs> Is petrol. <laughs> so I, I suppose it's all about who you surround yourself with. So we've got, my husband has a cousin, Laura, and his aunt, Jean. So they tend to go skiing in o Austria. And so they're used to having schnapps, so Austrian schnapps in Austria. So they understand it and they appreciate it. But I'll actually, I'll, most of my husband's British friends, they it is strong, but they do. we do explain that it's a plum brandy, so on, kind of type of drink and that it is very strong and it should be drunk in small measures so they do appreciate it and we're very lucky with our friends they they appreciate all the meals that I make for them and the drink you were saying about your friends uh, appreciating things yeah I, I always say to guests people from the United Kingdom in particular it's a sipping drink not a shooting drink and to take it easy yeah it's not a session it, it's just a it, it is in small measures, but I do remember once when I worked for the British Army and I, we went into w one of the villages close to Shippewa and I generally, this one soldier drank so much that I generally thought he was going to die because I'd never in my life seen somebody drink so much of it because I wasn't used to it. Occasionally you have it and it's like, a, it's, like a, it's a drink that you drink slowly and then occasionally the glass would be topped up, but, but they were down in it. I was like, no, it's like down in whiskey or vodka I, I don't really drink so i don't know <laughs> but yeah my favorite is dunya vacha i have to say ah okay i have, i don't think i've ever tasted it yeah i love it and but it's very difficult to uh, to come across unless it's commercially made and then there is a particular pear brandy that tam's mother buys five or ten liter containers of from the Piazza in Banyaluk and she always gives it to me as a gift which is really nice. When you're talking to people, your friends or people that come into contact with you, maybe not only at Christmas time but maybe also at Easter time, when they see that you've decorated your house in a particular way, it must stimulate questions. It must they must be saying, there's no what is this and what is what does it mean? How do they react to it? Do they find it fascinating or unusual? I think they do find it fascinating and uh, I try to explain that as authentically as possible and I also explain that actually the customs are very similar to the customs that the Greeks practice or the Russians and so on and so I so when it comes to coloring the eggs as well I introduce my child minding to children to that for Easter and we tend to do do the same customs with my children as in the children I look after and so I think 
I have made a conscious decision when I started my child minding business that I would include every family and embrace their customs as well. So they're very used to within our setting. That's something that we do. And, and so I just speak about it very openly and, and I feel supported. I really feel supported by our friends and um, people I work with, but I suppose it's all down to, again, who you surround yourself with. So I haven't come across any stigma when it comes to celebrating my customs. Have you had to spend most of your Christmases since you left the country? Do you, do you spend them in the United Kingdom or are you fortunate enough to get back into that glorious countryside near ship of old to have the, the real deal? So unfortunately, because of school holidays, so before we had the children, we were able to go to Bosnia, to, to Republika Srpska in, in Stripovo, to spend the Christmas with my family. But unfortunately, since we've had the children, since they've been at school, it is very difficult. So the last time I did, we did it, I think it was 2017, and it was amazing. So in, in our village, in Pireva, it is just quite magical. And as the Badniak is, during the war, when we didn't have the, when nobody really had any fuel, so... It was, the badniak was carried on the, on a horse-drawn carriage. And, and then we would go to the church and then the, the, they would light the badniak outside and we'd, we would drink hot blue, blue wine or hot wine. And it was really beautiful. I used to really enjoy it. And my husband loves it and the kids as well when we were there. But because of the school terms, it is quite difficult for us to get there. So this year, obviously, fell on, on Sundays, which was quite nice. But still, my husband works as a tutor or a teacher at weekends as well. So we had to wait for him to finish work. And then my older son, Dragan, he has a part-time job while he's studying. So we had to wait for him to finish as well. So then we were able to have our really, it was dinner, really. We could, so we couldn't have kind of Christmas lunch together. But yeah, so I every year I try to arrange it to see if I could get away but because I work in child in child care it's very difficult for me to take that time off because most of my clients are NHS so obviously they need to go to work and they need somebody to look after their kids. Talking about coming back when your husband and the boys come back I'm sure you're going to tell me that they have a blast how do they all get on linguistically? For me I'm still <laughs> My, my restaurant, Serbsky, is pretty good, I think. I can communicate with all sorts of manner of issues within the family. Thank goodness that Raki was created so we can all communicate. <laughs> but apart from that, I still struggle a bit. How is it? And in particular, the boys. Right. So I am the, worst, the world's worst language teacher. I simply... Um, <laughs> I, I I just simply don't have the patience to do it. I can say it honestly, and my husband would would you know would tell you exactly the same. So um, a few years ago, I contacted my um, dear friend, and we used to work together, Deanna, and and I asked her if she would recommend a tutor, and she recommended this wonderful lady called Sandra Brankovic, and and all I can say is that every marriage needs a Sandra. Because she has been absolutely amazing. So basically, once we got in touch with her, she, every Saturday and Sunday, our children and my husband have online lessons with her. And before then, we could, we could get by. And my husband's really keen to get fluent in Serbian. So he speaks, I suppose, languages come naturally to him. He speaks fluent German as well. And so every Saturday, uh, the boys have... And, and Sunday, um, have lessons with Sandra, and then um, my husband does on Sundays as well. Oh, sorry, Saturdays, because he teaches on, tutors on, on Sundays. So yeah, so that's been the best thing. But w my husband does joke that one of the hardest things for him to get used to has been when he says, if three Serbs are in a room, six of them are talking. And so where uh, everybody talks at the same time. And so he's so used to listening to one person at a time and so on. But I, I don't know how we have this ability to, for everybody to talk at the same time. We all hear each other. We all understand each other. We can just get on. So he, find, he still finds that very hard to get used to. But he loves the language and he's really keen not only to learn the language, but to learn it in the kind of 
shippable accent or pleva accent as well. So he wants to be speak it as authentically as possible. So he understands almost everything. He finds it easier to understand people from the Banyaluka area, where the accent is slightly stronger in Shipov area. So he, I think it's just because it's, I'm, I'm not sure, it, it just is, and especially my dad speaks fast, and then he has a very strong accent as well. But he's learned to say slowly, and, and then he's learned to say, but he loves, absolutely loves it. And whenever he can, certainly before uh, the pandemic, he used to go on his own sometimes because he just loves the culture, loves the people, loves how they just, my mom keeps saying, eat. And so he never feels hungry and they just let him be and they just embrace him. Yeah, absolutely fully. It, yeah, it is. It's just like in, in the UK. I, when I first started working as a translator and I had, we didn't really have regular lessons in English when I was at Chippewa because of the war. And then I had regular lessons in, we were refugees staying in, in Serbia between, in this village between Krushevac and Trstenik. Um, and I went to a grammar school in Trstenik. And so there I had very regular English lessons, but it was school English. And so when I first started working for S4 as a translator, we, the regiment was new, from Newcastle. And, and I, I thought, I am so grateful I managed to get this job, but I don't understand a single word they say. It was because they were all very, they had very strong accent. So it's, I suppose it's the same in the UK, like from Brummies to Geordies to Welsh to, yeah. So it's, or especially the Highlanders, for example, from, Sco from Scotland. Yeah. So he, he does, but he's learned to, and the boys to say, to do for. Would you like to move back and take everything that you've experienced in Britain with, and go back and get back to how things were? The plan is to build a retirement home in Bosnia. So that's our kind of dream. And I really, I'm really passionate about self-sufficiency. Where Reese, I call him my city boy, because he really is, he's really, he's very happy to support me and to help me, but it's not really his thing. He, he says, if it can be done on a spreadsheet, He'll get it done. <laughs> so I'm hoping one day for us to build our kind of forever home in Bosnia, in Piava. We already have some land there. And I would love to have a little small holding so we can be completely self-sufficient and have solar panels and so on. Yeah, so we don't leave a negative mark behind us once, once we're gone. So yeah, so that's what we would love to do. But we would love to keep a place here in the UK as well because we don't know where our children are going to live and... Family is very important to me and to my husband. And so we want to be as supportive to them as much as we can once they have their own families. So we would love to go in between the UK and, and Bosnia. Great. I don't want to keep you much longer because we are on a, on a Sunday. I think I've just got a message. Let me just check. I think Novak Djokovic just won his tennis match in Australia. Because in a way, I keep saying to the family and they're used to my... British sense of humor these days, but I, it's like a religion now that the Djokovic phenomena and everything stops. I am a huge, as you can imagine, huge supporter, and my, my family. So especially our teenage, he's nearly nineteen now. But when he was a bit younger, and especially during Wimbledon days, he'd be going around closing all the windows because I get really loud and really vocal, and and obviously a few words come out in Serbian that my children have learned they probably shouldn't have. Um, I wonder which ones those are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we're a huge, yeah, huge supporter. And uh, the same when, so my husband's really into rugby and he passionately supports Wales when, when the Six Nations is on and he gets exactly the same. We were just passionate about each of, each of the sports and each of the country sports. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's amazing and he's done so much, Djokovic has done so much for our culture and yeah, I do sometimes, I know he gets some bad press in the UK and in other countries as well, but uh, and I do think that's down to people not understanding the culture. You're so right. As we finish this podcast, to say that there are so many cultural misunderstandings going on around the world. And I think the more we, the more we meet other people, get to know other people, I think the tolerance levels go up. As I said, in 1998, when I came 
the Bosnia Herzegovina for six months. It has been an awful long six months as we now approach 2024. I didn't really ever leave, but it's for me, it's it's been an enjoyable experience to understand things. And I'll finish off with this and maybe if you're honest, you can either agree or disagree with me. I was speaking to Tamara's niece, who is 20, and there was a project from the university. She's, her English is brilliant. She actually mimics somebody from Brighton better than a, a Brighton person. <laughs> so she's able to do that. But she had a, a questionnaire from the university, and th they were questions for me. And they said, what are the similarities between the local people here and Brits. And I said, I think honestly, people from this region look like Brits in some ways, dress like Brits in some ways, and that's where it stops. Because there is a completely different mindset. And you just have to look at family. The focus on family here has left the United Kingdom decades and decades ago. This is, sorry, unrelated to, to this chat, but basically our tumble dryers packed in. And, and I had to go to the lo local laundrette. And when I got there, I was on my own. And, and it was my dad's birthday yesterday. So I rang him and we were just, every time I speak to my mum and dad, and, and we have a lovely relationship. And so we, I was laughing a lot. I was laughing a lot. In, and we were talking in Serbian. And then as that chat was happening, this local British person, the British man came in. And, and as we are Serbs are loud, <laughs> we were speaking to my mum and dad. We were laughing. And then once I'd finished, I said to the gentleman, I said, I'm really sorry, but I was just speaking to my mum and dad. And, and he said, please don't apologize. That's really lovely because it's great that you're actually speaking to them, not just laughing with them. And I understand where it comes from, and, but I can't imagine anything different. And so, it, yeah, the family situation has been, I would say, the hardest to get used to because my husband, unfortunately, doesn't come. He comes from a bro broken family and all the kind of... So it took him a while to get used to lots of hugs and kisses from like when, when, you, when he goes to see my family and he gets kissed three times by men and women and lots of hugs, lots of shoulder, just lots of, lots of affection. So it's certainly something that he wasn't used to. And but my boys, yeah, we still, I don't know, I can't imagine any kind of bringing them up any differently. Vesna, thank you very much for your time today. It's been an enlightening chat. And I hope that people that listen or watch or even read the transcript will get a real positive buzz out of your positivity, your enthusiasm and your love of keeping your culture alive, even though you're thousands of kilometers i think yeah you are over a thousand kilometers away yeah uh, we are i think just um i've learned over the years to i have always been brought up in my family in in, in ship of to to embrace people you know literally who they are and where regardless of where they come from so it's always been a division of as somebody's a good person and somebody's not a good person and as somebody's trustworthy and somebody's not not trustworthy and curry my husband is of, of the same opinion and we've always embraced everybody exactly the same as they deserve in a sense so over the years i've learned that i can be absolutely unapologetically serbian and to and yeah to be unap unapologetically serbian to embrace my culture because we embrace everybody else's culture so to expect to be treated the same way as we treat others. And I think we are, the more we know about each other, we are richer. And, and it's lovely. It's fun. And it's, yeah, it's really lovely. I love it. And we, I, I get more excited about British Christmas more than my husband does. So I really go out of my way to make as many different types of food and decorations and so on. But I, do, I feel exactly the same about Serbian Christmas.